as opening our front door. Um, it's open sesame. Uh, the problem we had was uh, people often forgot their key cards. We use key cards to open our front door. Um, we had, you know, people like the postman, the UPS guy, uh, the <coughs> guy coming and ringing the bell, and every time this happened, someone had to get up, walk to the door, hit the button, come back. It was just a pain in the butt. And uh, and with a really anemic uh, doorbell, like it was one, like basically five people could hear it ever. So those five people kept on getting up and down. Up. <coughs> it was the most feeble doorbell ever. Yeah. Um, and of course, the dinner and delivery guy, which everybody ran to. Um, at Newton, we started something called Newton Hack Days, where we were free, we were allowed to work on anything we wanted, and uh, Devonstein chose to work on the door and fix the problem where nobody needs to get up from their seat to go open the door, and these are just some shots of people sticking their heads in the ceiling and uh, painting walls and uh, all that fun stuff. Devin is going to take over from here and explain the process of what happens when the doorbell rings. All right, so can we your video? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, we have, you know, it's a, an ARCID door opener. Um, a lot of companies have those. You just have a card and you tap it. Well, it turns out that, like, all of these things, like many other uh, pieces of equipment that you have in an office, it has, like, a little central circuit board. And um, in many cases, the... Uh, thing that's necessary to open the door is you take a wire and you short it across two other wires in there and the door opens. Um, so we found the we found the central panel for it and uh, um, read the circuit diagram because it's on there and uh, shorted two wires and magically the door opened. <laughs> so um, figured that out and then we had to figure out where the doorbell was and we had to like, go up to the ceiling and dig through this like large pile of wires and found an ancient, like, nasty 1970s doorbell that has, uh, um, uh, it basically, like, electrically fires a, a little bar out that hits uh, a, a bell. Uh, and um, when we were looking at it, you know, it was connected right to the system's AC, and we didn't want to, like, screw with that because I didn't want to catch the electrical death. So uh, <laughs> I, I wired up uh, a, a piezo buzzer. Like, if you're familiar with the inside of... Uh, <laughs> Inside of like your clock uh, clock alarm radio, you'll have like a little buzzer that when it goes off, it'll be like bzz, bzz, bzz. that's a piezo buzzer. And when you run electricity through it, it buzzes. But if you hit it really hard, it generates electricity the other way. So I put a piezo buzzer inside of it so the hammer would hit it, and then put it all together with an Arduino. Uh, are any of you guys familiar with an Arduino? So I've heard of it in my life. <laughs> yeah. Lies. Hush you. <laughs> um, so it's a, for those who aren't familiar with it, it's a small computing platform that uh, allows you to do microcontroller programming, really cheap, really easy to work with. Uh, you just program C on it, plug in wires, and you can, like, um, like really anybody can um, make a hardware hack with it. So we wired up a relay to the, uh, the door opener, wired up the piezo to the doorbell, and then um, wrote some software to connect it all together. Um, so that's the circuit, really simple. A couple LEDs to show what's going on, um, a relay in the top uh, to be able to connect the wires. Um, and if anybody wants you know, the software or the hardware from this, it'll be posted on our blog. So we wired together a little box, um, Arduino's at the bottom, that's a specific type of one, but um, relays up at the top, connected it all up, and um, tied it in together, and then it's, how did you want to do the demo? Uh, I was just going to pull up the web interface. Oh, okay. And Should so once all this is done, uh, Jess, if you want to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like you're just going. <laughs> Both of you can do it. Okay. Um, once we got all this stuff together, we made a simple uh, web interface to see what was going on. Um, Where's the video? Uh, it's on the flash Yeah. Wrong one. There you go. Typo. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, where's the video? <laughs> what did you do to this on your screen? I didn't do anything. Okay, okay there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we have 
have a video of what's going on outside. Um, and when Jess rings the doorbell, but she clearly is not doing it at this moment. Jess, ring the doorbell. Anyway, skipping ahead, when the doorbell rings, we get uh -oh. another. <laughs> Ring it! <laughs> We all get IMs on our IM account oh, saying, um, you know, the doorbell has been okay, rung. Go ahead and, open the and then we see it. <laughs> <laughs> and see how anemic that doorbell is? You can't hear it, and it's like 20 feet that way. So, <laughs> so you hit the button, and it basically makes a call to uh, his device, which basically opens the door. Yeah, we just put a web service on top of it. You post to that web service on the special address, and like, bing, open. So once we had that, um, this is the flow. Basically, doorbell rings, um, the circuit senses it, it IMs everybody, gets a response, the door opens, and a message shows up on the display outside saying the door has been opened. So once we did that, we took it a step further and decided to integrate Twilio with it. Um, Twilio is great in the sense that we can text things, call things. I'm sure John has more to say about that. <laughs> but uh, this is the flow we kind of thought about. You know, you, you text a Twilio number. Twilio sends a request to door.php, which is on our internal server here. A couple of holes in the firewall. Door.php validates the user based on caller ID. Also checks the password that we pre-assign to all our users. And then the door opens. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure how many of you actually used uh, the feature we had posted outside. It was really small at the bottom that said, you did? Yes. Okay. And uh, you can basically text the door and uh, it responds and uh, opens up. So I'm thinking if I should kick uh, Jess out again. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to text it or do you want me to just go? Sure, you can text it. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or actually I'll do it on my Google Voice so that people can see what the response is. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, important safety tip if you're doing something like this that controls secure resources, do note that it is very, very possible to uh, spoof um, caller ID numbers. There are websites where you can just send SMSs from any number out there, so that's why we uh, also added a password. You can't just use the phone number as the All right, as so the now we see Jess outside. She can very well do this from her phone, but I'm going to do it from here. This is the number I set up today for demo purposes. Um, so I literally just say hi, and goes away. The door should be open, and Jess should be on her way in. Yeah. <laughs> and the message says, "Welcome to Newton." Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's about it uh, for the presentation. We have a short two-minute video that was. Um, originally filmed to go on the blog. It's unfinished. It's uh, close to being done, actually. But you guys get a special preview for coming over. This <laughs> audio. And if you want circuit diagrams or software, the it'll be on the blog. Can you for ways to make oh, office life just a little bit easier? Make coffee. <laughs> <laughs>
traced the wires to <laughs> the ceiling, we finally found the doorbell, we realized that it was attached to the building's AC power. And we really didn't want to screw with that, because frankly, I don't want to catch the death from electricity. So, we decided we needed to come up with another plan. <laughs> circuit and write some software. The circuit diagram and the software are up on our blog. So, with the software complete, we allowed the system to hook up to our internal Google chat. So when a person presses the doorbell, we get a ring, and that allows us to open the door. Toto allowed us to take it to the next level. So once we had a way to <laughs> open the door, uh, we could extend its functionality to make people's lives easier. Lana Capes Williams also made BIs and it let us trigger door events using text messages or phone calls. A couple of holes in the firewall later, it's a PHP and MySQL. We had a way to interface our door with uh, text messages where people could text their passphrase to a predefined number and that would automatically open the door. <laughs> so that's it, a text control door in five easy steps. Short the wire to the door. Pack the doorbell, create the device, write the software, Twilio. Next time, Devin and Cherie will show us how to use facial recognition software and a high-power multi-emitter laser diode to temporarily restructure the molecules of the door so you don't even have to use the doorbell.